Hey, this is Gareth and Bruce. This is our first attempt at a podcast. We just, just don't, don't know, know where it's, it's gonna, gonna go. go. You got more of the gruff voice. I got more of the soft and feminine voice. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I don't know. I felt a little snobby when we hit 10 episodes. Okay, that's an interesting question. The two of us can, can be Vin Diesel. Gareth can drive like him. And I can <laughs> yeah, look can like him. Like him. <laughs> Welcome to Spaghetti Junction. My name is Gareth. My name is Bruce. And we talk about things. We just don't, don't know, know where, where they're, they're going to go. go. Hello and welcome to Spaghetti Junction Podcast. My name is Bruce. My name's Gareth. Thanks so much for stopping your crunching there, sir. I know, I stopped just before <laughs> you. You did, uh, that was good timing, man. Thank you. He's like, oh shit, I'm, crum- I'm, I'm crunching. I'm crunching my eyes. <laughs> just managed to slow down. We talk uh, about things. And we just don't know where they're going to go. No, we don't. Episode 92. Damn, dude, we're almost there. Eh? 92. And so if you didn't catch last week's, the last episode, we celebrated two years. Two years, baby. Yeah, that was it. Eh? Two years. And uh, and um, I know for <laughs> for large attendance, this is like a, a mini school of what they would get per video. But for us, so we were proud. We got over 30,000 views now. 30,200 30, views. On the channel in general. Yeah. yeah. That's general. cool, eh? Yeah. But you know what? We're babies, okay? <laughs> We're happy, happy with that in our, in our little corner of the internet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the last episode was about 450-odd views as well, so it seemed yeah. that people actually wanted to know about that kind of thing. Yeah. Very cool, yeah. There was a good discussion, eh? Hey? Yeah. Remember how we said it? We, I, we didn't th- I didn't think it was going to go for an entire... 40 minutes and yeah geez, i know I we always it. make it go far <laughs> we didn't even try <laughs> no exactly and i'm like upcoming there's gonna be it's not in canada but it's uh ripples mm-hmm. from canada i don't think if it's from canada itself but what's happening in canada seems to be having noise around the world kind of mm-hmm. thing so we'll well, bring there that we up. Go. yeah um i just wanted to bring up because the world cup uh in qatar is now happening yeah. Uh, World Cup football, if you guys know. And as you'll know, that I'm very p- p- passionate about my football. I watch it. I love it. I freaking follow things. I watch podcasts after it. Well, for this um, this actual um, uh, World Cup, I'm not watching it. Um, You're boycotting, yeah? I'm not that anyone's going to care. Yeah, so, but still. Yeah. I'm not boycotting like blah, blah, blah. i'm just not going to watch it mm. and and to me i'm I, I mean this is like every four years only i'm not mm. going to be able to watch world cup again and there's like i probably cannot no not probably for example someone like ronaldo in portugal this is his last world cup gareth bale from wales this is his last world cup mm-hmm. um there's so many players so, so that there are I, I mean and those guys are like uh, football deities i would say i would love to watch them play but I'm just going to pull it up um, now that we're talking here. Um, I should have actually had it on me now. Sorry, guys. Mm. Um, so we we actually discussed this um, in a previous podcast episode. And I'm just going to bring it up. Uh, ep- ep- episode 83. For some reason, it, 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 it only got 22 views. So I need you guys to, you know. <laughs> Buck up and <laughs> sort yourself out and watch it again. Um, well, 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 why I'm bringing it up is is it basically just we find all the proof and everything going on behind the scenes as to why Qatar World Cup, there's so much stuff underneath it, like literally dead bodies. Um, I don't know if they're actually underneath the stadium, that'd be freaky. <laughs> but uh, th- my point is that people have died, migrant workers have died. There's a new article out, which I'm going to post the link under our description of the episode. Um, and I'm just, just just going to read a little bit. This is not to sway you to, you know, I'm going to watch football or not. I, I don't care. Um, I mean, but now, for example, my um, my brother, he has access now to watch the World Cup in 4K. Jeepers. Okay, I, I, I know it's sports. Like, why would you want to? I mean, you know sports anyway. Ooh. But the fact that, I mean, I mean, it's just completely like, like you're almost there. Yeah. He's, 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 he's not going to watch it. Sure. I think the clo- I think the closest I come to watching 4K is if I watch an, a series of uh, an, a, a season of um, Drive to Survive, that Formula that One documentary oh. on Netflix. I think that's filmed in 4K, and that's insane. So I, mean, I can get the idea, mm. but football. Except mm. your screen would also have to be 4K as well to actually handle. Yeah. So 
I think it, I think the screens have been 4K that I've been watching. Anyway. Oh, because you've been hustling. Been hustling. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, then they're definitely on 4K TVs. <laughs> so that's not even a thought. Yeah. So let me just do like a, a quick little read of, of a part of the article. And then um, this is not to make you guys feel bad or what, you know, just there's watch it. it it's cool. It's, it's going to be fantastic. It's just that this is all, Qatar wouldn't have gotten this without my money passing hands. Yeah. FIFA will never say that, obviously, but FIFA, uh, they, um, I've done some research. They don't really make much money out of any other of their FIFA hosted, uh, you know, um, um, you know, cups, uh, um, tournaments. Okay, it's, it's the World the Cup. Men's the Men's World main. Cup is where the money comes right. through. So when excess money comes up, because, you know, um, Qatar had no st stadiums whatsoever. So they had to build they had nothing. New they had to build them from scratch. Wow. Um, they got it going. Um, they were awarded the World Cup in 2010. So they've been building, obviously, from there onwards. But they had nothing. Their, f I, their football team is like almost obsolete. Yeah. So there's no reasons why they would ever have a World Cup. Mm. And it's always damn hot there, even in winter. Yeah. I mean, I was reading that there's outdoor places that they've used air conditioning in. It's I don't know how they've done it. Yeah, I mean, when I was when I was when we when we stopped in Dubai for eight hours, we were sitting on the beach having dinner at midnight. It was 28 degrees, and that was in October, so it was kind of winterish. It wasn't really. Yeah, it's like it was still was bearable. Nowish, yeah. And um and and then when we landed, going to the states, uh, we landed at three in the morning. I couldn't believe the humidity. Bad. She's like, just step out of that plane onto the tarmac. It's just like, it hits you. And really? it sits on your chest. <laughs> That's horrid. <laughs> That's hectic. So, geez, imagine playing playing football. And yeah. Yes. But now we go backwards again. Mm. Imagine having to work in oh, those man. temperatures. Manual labor. Building yeah. the stadiums that people are going to sit in, watching the glorious football that I love football. But, okay. No, not under these We have already done that episode guys so you know please go back to that i don't care if there's only 22 views mm -hmm. the fact that i think it'd be good for you guys to actually understand a little bit behind what's yeah. what's been happening and we have said this once or twice that that's I, I, that you know that we've said we do the research so you don't have to <laughs> so there's no reason why you shouldn't understand what's happening in qatar as to what actually the the backbone behind the stadiums literally the backbone mm. so i'm just going to do a quick reading and yes i'm passionate about it because it's <laughs> human rights and i have a passion for human rights um the guardian re reported last year that six and a half thousand south asian migrant workers have died in qatar since the country was awarded the world cup in 2010 most of whom were involved in low wage dangerous labor often undertaken in extreme heat the report did not connect all six and a half thousand deaths with, with World Cup infrastructure projects. Okay, and it wasn't officially verified by CNN, so maybe it's six thousand. But the point is, it's um, it is a lot. Um, okay, maybe just to you know sh show both sides, so I, I don't take little parts of it and make it sound. Mm. Um, this person called Hassan Al. Tawari, the man in charge of leading Qatar's preparations, told CNN's Becky Anderson that, 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 that the Guardian 6,500 figure was a sensational headline that was misleading in the fact and that the report lacked context. A government official told CNN there had been three work-related deaths on stadiums and 37 non-work-related deaths. In a statement, the official said the, the Guardian figure... I'm <laughs> sorry. Three work-related deaths and 37 non are you saying in 12 years, with all that happening around you, with the working standards, with the heat, with the low pay, with the no health health insurance? I think we can call a Bullshit. big. I think we can go call a big smelly pile on that one. <laughs> exactly. <go>. No. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, oh, and very, very, very lastly. Um, okay, no, I won't really go into that. There's a lot more on this article, guys. I would say definitely, um, you know, uh, give it a read because it is very. It's not to swear you. It's saying like this is the, this is reality. Yeah. But enjoy the football World Cup. It's going to be fantastic. I'm sure. Mm. Just don't tell me the scores because I don't care. Thank you. Uh, I was I, never I was never one to watch the World Cup, but I always enjoyed watching the final. 
of the finals. It was like the there was like the really exciting one. Yeah, and stuff like that. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And speaking about finals, it was the women's world rugby, the women's rugby world cup, um, in uh, New Zealand. Okay. Re- recently, and uh, um, I think it was in two weeks ago, if I'm correct, mm. maybe a week ago. Well, I think it was two weekends ago. Uh, no. <laughs> Let's just say a week. Who won? <laughs> New Zealand. But it was yeah. close. It was um, Who did they play, though? 33-30, England. Oh. And they had, a, and I can't, I won't get it exact right, but I think England had a 30-win streak. Jeez, look. A 30-game win streak. Yo. And it came right down to the, the last few minutes where it was 33 to New Zealand, 30 to England, right on the edge. And there was a final ball, you know, from a line in that went through and it was for England and they were right on the try line of the they're called the Black Ferns not the All Blacks um, and they basically managed to get, get the ball back and they managed to win it Damn. it was quite a final sure. so right we just sp- sp- spoke about a little bit about sp- sports I know we went in a little bit longer but I really wanted to talk about Qatar yeah that's fine so oh and by the way sorry one last thing I promise um, when you are new to the show, the show, new to our podcast, you know, yeah. and you're saying like, why did the guy just talk nonsense until I want to get to the topic? Well, this is just how we are as a podcast. If you, you know, you know we just like to bring up stuff before the topic, yes? Yeah, before the main... Preamble. Preamble. So if, if, if you're not a fan of preamble, go for about nine or ten minutes and you'll find <laughs> the next, uh, the actual um, episode, uh, subject itself. There you go. But you may as well just enjoy it as well because this is why people like us i tell myself <laughs> well, we that <laughs> i tell myself so that yeah so th- thank you for, for, for giving me that platform i appreciate it mm. thank you guys for listening no worries and um yeah thank you sorry cool. i just wanted to bring that up yeah and we, we we essentially like you've just been speaking about the the women's rugby and now we're continuing with female sport in our we're, actual. We're bringing in sports, in actually, right? Yes. In our actual topic. That's right. We're bringing yeah. in basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we're, we're talking about um, this young lady, um, Brittany Griner, who is a eight-time WNBA All-Star and two-time Defensive Player of the Year in the Women's yep. um, National Basketball Association mm-hmm. in America. Yep. Uh, and. Unfortunately, on August twenty in August twenty second, she was found guilty of drug charges um, because she went to go and play in Russia. So she was okay, but where were the drug charges in Russia? Correct. When she arrived in Russia. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so I they, just wanted to yeah. make sure that. Yeah, she was. Um, so uh, when she went through customs, she they discovered um, she she had vape cartridges, and those vape cartridges contained hashish oil, obviously derived from marijuana. Marijuana is an illegal drug in Russia, and they take a pretty hard line at it. And she Very was, hard and, line. And she was arrested. Um, she's been in custody since seventeenth. So this happened the seventeenth of around the seventeenth of February, because that's when she was. That's when she's been in custom in custody since. Yes. I hope that was correct English. That was good. Yes, it was good. It was good. Cool. It was good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Since since Feb. So yeah. So um, and being in custody in Russia is never a good thing. No. <laughs> Am I right, though, in this? I mean, I didn't see how much she brought in, but from what I understood, there wasn't a, a high a high level of, I honestly of marijuana. I honestly couldn't find, I couldn't information, find either. information on, like, how many cartridges, because that's how vape works, and you just insert a cartridge with all the oil in, and then you, just, you puff away. Um, it just said they found cartridges. Okay. Um, with okay. with so um, it it wasn't a reasonable amount that they would go like yes according according to her though I did see sort of when she had made statements or whatever she according to her the amount was not very much over whatever if there is an acceptable amount it wasn't very it wasn't just like she was no like exactly from, container from what I understood whatever. it was very low very minuscule very it really low. wasn't. Yeah. Like I thought, if that was in another country, would the same thing have happened? It does. It does seem like, yeah. There's and and there's a lot of, I mean, even the defense team is saying this was completely out of proportion. You know, oh, absolutely. You you're saying nine years, eh? She's been sentenced to nine so years. So why it's been brought up now as well? And you know, you know, I mean, you, you know, we we had been aware of it for 
well, since then, but there's just been a bunch of new things that have come up like literally a day or two ago. So I'm going to carry on with it. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so she is, she, uh, so we, we, we've since heard that she's been moved to a women's uh, penal colony. Penal colony. Yeah. In um, uh, an area of Russia called Mordovia. Yep. Um, in, from, a, in, a, in a smaller area called Yavas. And from what I was reading, it can take up to two, two days of travel. All right. Yeah. It's 500 kilometers southeast of Okay, Moscow. maybe not 200. Okay, okay, then it wouldn't be in two days. Hell, well, depending on those roads, man. You don't know. Actually, it's a valid <laughs> 500K point. 500 Ks on the right, on the on the wrong roads, should we say, not the right roads. No. The wrong roads could take you. That's very valid, actually. Yeah, exactly. So I wouldn't be surprised. Russia and Russia is just, I mean, you go out there in the, go out there in the bundus. No one's going to yes. notice. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, um, okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, I was going to jump in. You carry on. I'll, I'll keep on. Sorry. So basically what, what, and what she, what she was saying at her trial was that she has, um, she uses the cannabis oil for, um, um, pain relief from sports injuries. Yes. Which is a, it's a, it's a common use of cannabis oil. A lot of people, a lot of medicinal people use it for uh, medicinal. Yes, it's got it medicinal purposes. Yes, yes, yes. She wasn't. Okay, so that was the reason why she had it with her. She said. Yeah, and she had not. She had no intention, and she had no. Ma- she did not mean to break any sort of laws or anything like that. Oh, no, of course not. So, that's that's basically her, her defense where she's coming from. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was wondering, off the bat, was that well two things if it was from another country in another country which she had been given would have would it have taken this long for her to get you know like come you know to get sentenced and so forth and number two um would this have been a nine-year thing if she wasn't from america interesting couple of questions especially the american one yeah Russia and America haven't really gotten on much, and now you've got this added thing of you know Russia and Ukraine, and all that. So yeah, I think it was the worst possible time for her to her to be there. Now yeah. sure, she should have thought about you know sh- what she's bringing into any country, mm. um, but I'm just surprised at what would have been the amount of it, and that it was you know um, as to her getting such a long time and also being sent to this colony. Yeah which uh, is a, a whole nother story. And yeah. I was reading as well that, 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 okay, so to backtrack, to, to, so like someone might ask, um, like wh- um, why would someone even want to go and play in Russia? I mean, like of all countries. So as Bruce was saying, she's from the WNBA, the Women's Basketball National Association. Um, and um, they, um, in a year, um, so my other, I'm, um, Sorry, it's on my other article. They would get a few hundred thousand a year. Um, but if you... If they, if they play in America. If you're playing in America right. in the league, that's what you get paid. Right. Um, and it's just it just shows across the board how women's sport... I know this is not our topic, but women's sports get paid reasonably far less than the than, than the, uh, the men, obviously. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Um, but going to Russia to play in one of their teams in the off-season... Um, she would have earned over a million dollars for an off season, not a year. Just for a season of basketball, she would make over a million. So there's a big answer to well, why would someone go to a place and play basketball? You're not getting paid as much as you could possibly be paid in your own country. Uh, so on your off season, you can do what you want to do. Yeah. Some go away on holiday, and some go play basketball in Russia. And it's not. It's not. Um, um, it's not uncommon. No. Okay. Well, she just happened to go there, and unfortunately, brought in the. Uh, it's. Yeah. Anyways, it did, does make me think as to what would happen if it had been another country. Yeah. Um, it possibly would have been, you know, like a s- slap on the wrist kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. So what we have now is uh, Russia and America are currently trying to see if they can reach some sort of agreement and, and make a deal um, as a, for a prisoner exchange um, for multiple American prisoners, one of which would be Brittany Griner. 
Um, there is another. There is another particular um, uh, American. I sorry, I didn't take down his name. Maybe you've got his name, but he's uh, he he's supposedly in for, supposedly in for supposedly serving sixteen years on suspicion of espionage. Exactly. Um, which which I didn't I didn't go into his sort of his case or whatever. But it he, sounds he would be one of the one of the other prisoners. That it's they would. it's from what I was reading and stuff. It sounds very trumped up. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, and they want to uh, they want to exchange him, <laughs> exchange for, them both, for, or exchange them yeah. um, for um, essentially one of the world's most wanted men, Victor Bout, or yes. both, Bout, Bout, ba- Bout I, Victor Bout. Let's just yes. go with that. He's an arms dealer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also known as the Merchant of Death. So yeah, sounds like a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, re- responsible for selling selling weapons in all kinds of different areas that have then you know subsequently been used to kill American troops and stuff like that. You Americans don't like this dude. Of course not. And I don't know where I didn't I didn't get information of where he's imprisoned. In Europe. Is he in Europe? He's, he's not in America. No, he's not in America. They haven't, and quite, they haven't I gone. Think they haven't quite gone Guantanamo on his bare, on his ass. No, yet. he's. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you where he is. Um, I would say. I don't want to say what. Um, but is he, even though he's imprisoned in Europe, is he still, is he officially a prisoner of the United States? Do you know that much at all? I, just a I question know, that I have. I know that, that it's not as easy as getting him out of jail there because he's in another country. That country has to allow it to happen as well. Right. So he's obviously... He's, so he's not under complete control of America, no. Okay. They have to talk to the other country oh, right, okay. and I, I i'm sorry guys i just i don't know where he is uh, all i know is that it's, it's in europe okay and they have to dance the beat with that country before they can just yank him out right. well he's not the subject of the podcast no so that's why. but anyways he's uh yeah so for him to be released uh it's a big step and that's where russia is enjoying this and this is why i believe that russia did this to Brittany. okay not just because she i because i mean it was a a very small amount. Yeah. She played basketball for their country. I'm sure most people liked her. I think they wanted Victor Bout out. And there's an American coming through. She has... Oh, my gosh. Okay, she has a vape. With, okay. This is our, this this is is our, our opportunity. Yeah. This is what, what I believe. That this is our opportunity. And we're going to basically, you know, like make things bad for her. And say, oh, you know, all right, America, if you want her back, let's... Talk Victor. Yeah, yeah, and that also, you know, just like just like these, cho- like a nine-year sentence for something seemingly as very small as this. This is a very unequal exchange of prisoners. I mean, this is a, you know, you know, one okay, a basketball player on like some tiny little yeah, you know, charge and everything, and yeah. then pu- and then another American on a possibly trumped-up charge of supposed es- espionage. Yeah, in it's- exchange for this guy. <laughs> Like, it almost makes me think of the Bible where Jesus and Barabbas, where, you know what, I'll... Yes, correct. They where, to, which one do you want me to free, Barabbas or Jesus? And Jesus is like, he hasn't done anything wrong. He's done nothing wrong his whole life. Barabbas was we have Barabbas, who's a thief and, and a mur- I think he's a murderer, think he's a murderer as well. As well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, we'll, um, we'll keep the most, you know, like, He's done no wrong, and we'll give you this murderer thief. Sure. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't equate. doesn't equate. Have. Now, no, we're not talking about Jesus and Barabbas in the story. It just made me think, like, yeah. the complete opposites. Mm. Um, it's an unfair exchange, basically. Yes. Very unfair. Yes. So, so yeah, well, we'll see. But, yes, I mean, he uh, he's had a checkered life, hasn't he? Yeah. And as you say, we're not talking about him. Mm. But to just to show the, um, you know, the... Um, Um, the uh, extent of it. So, um, and apparently, s- apparently, just one one thing is Please, Russia, yes. Russia. Russia does. There is a. There is. It does. Russia does seem to be warming to the idea that it's. There are some positive feelings around this that Russia might accept this. Yes. This whole. Yes. This whole deal. Although nothing. Nothing concrete has happened yet. And this was over a couple of days ago. So. Yes, that's right. It's. It's reasonable. It's reasonably. Um, it's it's reasonably it's it's fresh yeah. off 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 the griddle kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the um, penal colony where she is? 
or do you have something else in your head? Um, I've got something. Oh, I didn't really look into the okay. actual facility, but if I you, have. I think but you've got. You go into where you got planned, and I'll follow you. I just I um, <laughs> the why? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's carry on. Because <laughs> I'm always about the why. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> um, it's just very interesting. Cause I, I don't know if I don't know if you are aware of um that there are actually quite a few Americans who really don't like Brittany Griner because of her stance on the American national anthem of a couple of years ago. I know nothing about that. And she did a, she made a protest because she was, um, she, um, uh, she would do the whole, like take the, taking the knee and protesting against um, uh, the singing of the national anthem at sporting events, specifically at the NWA. NWB. N- N- NWBA. WNBA, sorry. <laughs> I got it wrong as well. So my fine. bad, my bad. Carry on. Um, yeah, so she caught quite a bit of heat in 2020 um, for um, yeah. She she protested against the national and the U.S. national anthem. Is the reason why? Because it's um, because her being a black person, she yeah. she doesn't believe that the national anthem represents all Americans, because the national anthem was actually written. Um, in 1814, which is long before the Civil War, freeing of the slaves, anything like that. Okay. She believes that this is just not right. And she wouldn't, they basically, her and a, a bunch of other teammates wouldn't actually even come out onto the court before the game while the, while the national anthem was being played. And so when you look at the YouTube comments, there's a lot of people that are like, well, what the hell do we want her back for? Really? Yeah, it's like, if she's going to disrespect our, our, our country... And our national anthem, she can freaking stay in Russia. That's it. Yeah. So if you, wow. Yeah. If you go and have a, if you go and have a look, yeah. So she caused the stink, eh? and there's not a lot of people. It's quite a few people in America who, you know, America's. I don't think you get more patriotic (laughs) in America than the American anthem. Like, don't diss my flag. Don't diss my anthem. Don't diss my country. Exactly. And uh, yeah, they're like, well, what do we want it back for? Wow. So there is that. There was that reaction to this whole thing. So it's like, yeah, flip Russia. You can keep her. She's going to be like that. She can stay. She can keep them, leave her there to rot, kind of mm-hmm. thing. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. So obviously now, American government with those kind of people is not very, is not very popular because they're trying to, but anyway. So yeah, that was just a, because I, I started, I started <coughs> reading the YouTube comments on the videos that I was watching to, and I was like, Ooh, hold on a sec. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, I no kind of remember something about her. I think that's when she sort of really got into the news was because of the heat she caught back then. Um, she was kind of wow. a, little bit, a little bit sort of notorious for these sort of sort of protests. And but uh, even her notoriety should never um, be... A, uh, there's there's no ways that that can be used. Like, okay, well, because you've no, done this, yeah. now, now you can go in the penal colony yeah. for nine years yeah. and be treated like... So yeah. Fair enough. That is just a, it's just an interesting aspect. Of no, it, it is. It's, uh, so I'm just yeah. saying to the, to to those people that even if she, I mean, she, you know, she's hurt you in your country and your flag, she's uh, she's still an American citizen. She's an American is, citizen. Yeah, and your country has a has a duty to try and. At and least she's in like one of the worst places mm. in the world. No, absolutely. Yeah. It was actually so. Um, can I jump into it? Yeah, go for it, please. So, um, cool. So wh- where she is, it, it is called the IK2, the IK-2 Women's Penal Colony. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, as you're saying, in the remote village of Yavas in Mordovia, 500 Ks, southeast of, of the capital. Okay. Right. All right. So let me give you a little bit of a in-depth look as to where she's going to be. And this is why I'm saying, yeah, fine. She dissed your flag and everything, but... Uh, She's a human being, and this is like yeah, this. This, is not a great this place to be. supersedes your issues about the anthem. Yeah, really. Yeah. It's, I mean, I don't want to say it's just a song. Anthems are powerful, part of your country. Yeah, fair enough. But, but uh, compared to, to someone's life, mm. it's a song. <laughs> <laughs> What's that comment section? I'm just saying, <laughs> in comparison to a human life. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. So get over it. Anyways, so. Um, the woman's penal colony in Navas has a, compas- a capacity of 820 places. Okay, her jail is one of Russia's regular prison colonies, regular, where most of 453,000 inmates are held. 
Repeat offenders or those with sentences for grave crimes are sent to strict regime or special regime colonies. The difference lies in the number of visits allowed by relatives, frequency of permitted parcels with feudal clothing, and the severity of punishments for breaking regulations. So, so now this is where she is right, right now. Some grave crimes are punishable with time in cells, no access to open air at all. On the other end of the penitentiary scale are colony settlements for those committing lesser crimes. The, uh, those are more relaxed and even allow days away from the barracks. Now, no, she's not in this. Okay. Um, women make up around 5% of Russia's prison population. So there are far fewer correctional facilities for women, which means re relatives who want to visit have to travel further, which is why she's so far away. Right. And, she, and she's not in the lighter, you know, she's not in the, you know, in the one where, you know, the, um, the um, co colony settlement for those who are doing lesser crimes. They mm -hmm. see this as a, again, this is, it's, it's a crime, but I believe because it's American, they've made it. Okay, so um, here we go. Just on the side here, um, her conviction will be of no surprise, though, to anyone. 13.5% of all sentences in 2021 were handed down for possession, smuggling, or dealing illicit drugs. For women, that number rises to 42%, although not all were custodial. So, sure, um, the drugs is an issue. Mm -hmm. I still feel... So, maybe with that, maybe it's right that you got nine years. Maybe it's fair. And maybe, you know, maybe this whole hoo-ha is because she's American. And we're all like, damn you, and bring her back to your country. It's just questions that are coming from mine right now. Yeah, yeah. I still see it as if she wasn't American... I don't think she would have been sent to somewhere like this, like far off and for nine years. So um, I do have a little um, breakdown here, just a little bit extra here. Um, okay, cool. So um, she, um, so, okay, th um, there are no correctional facilities for foreigners or whatsoever. So you all get lumped in the same place. Right. Okay. If you know the language, you don't know the language. I mean, now you're in a whole new place. It was actually likened to the Gulag, mm -hmm. if you know the Gulag from the war, yes. which is a horrible place. This is, some of these places have been likened to the Gulag. Um, and, okay, and you're there, and you don't don't know the language. And by the way, she's tall. Yeah. Like yeah, basketball player, obviously. She's six something. Mm, yeah, she's super tall. Okay, so there are, however, 20 prisons that house various law enforcement employees who break the law. Oh, that'd be fun. So, so they don't mix potentially with criminals to help put, put away. So um, that's just a side thing. Um, so the violence that happens in the men's facilities do, do, do not take places in the women's. But um, Olga... So, so of the NGO Russia Behind Bars says life for inmates is not easy. There's no established informal jail hierarchy in, in, in women's jails, but admi administration controls everything. And there's plenty of ways, they say, um, of turning an inmate's life into hell. Um, under Russian laws, inmates have to work. Most do, as refusing normally means trouble. Fair enough. Yeah. Work, screw you. Uh, but the highest case of... No, the, the highest cost of convicts in the male criminal hierarchy, known as Blatnir, refuse on principle. Um, so inmates work from 12 to 16 hours a day with lunch and toilet breaks. 12 to 16 hours a day. Uh, de daily quotas are set very high, but one official's salary is normally shared by several inmates, and it really isn't much money at all. Mm. It's like... Yeah, so, they do, uh, so, you, so inmates are actually paid. It's extremely it's mega, minimal. It's mega. Oh, it's. Yeah. I think they have to. I think it's like mm. law that they yeah. have to, yeah. not because they want to. Mm. And they work from twelve to sixteen hours a day, and what they get yeah. no. is it's just it yeah. pay for what you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so as a result, inmates will workers only get a pay of several hundred rubles a month. I need to do a, a, a crossover between the dollars and rubles, but it, it really oh. Funny enough, <laughs> that is the equivalent of just a few dollars or right. pounds a month. Right. Just a few dollars, okay. 12 to 16 hours. So really, it's not really a, yeah. a payable thing. Um, and this is a fraction of what even the poorest Russians get paid for the 40-hour working week. Sure. Um, 
there's a um okay the Yavas penal colony where where Amgrana is imprisoned or thought to be in prison does not have a good reputation with inmates who work there speaking of beatings and intimidation someone says i worked as a seamstress and there is a law if you do not fulfill the production rate you are beaten sounds like a yeah um there is a lot more on this but i know you you probably have a few thoughts oh, and one yeah. last thing which i wanted to, to bring in just going on her height mm. um you know um um we, you know like like where they sew and everything you know they sit and they're sewing and so yeah. for her being so tall mm. um it's also much harder for her because you know it, they're not made for yeah, her she's height gonna, she's going to struggle to sort of sit in one position for so long and that kind of thing probably and that's allowed to stand up and take a we'd stretch hope so break, yeah. stretch break and yeah. stuff and so it's 12 to 16 hours and uh, i mean i could go into it more you know research more if you'd like to but um the bottom line is it is not a nice place to be yeah well you know for her sake let's let's hope that let's hope that some sort of deal is is broken in some way but uh yeah we'll just have to keep an eye on it and see how see how things go it's probably still gonna it's probably still gonna be a while yes so i it's not I, gonna, I mean the, the the american you know the um american who was supposedly espionage he's been in prison for uh some bit over two between two and three years right and he's still he's still there yeah um so. yes oh and she's six foot nine by the way damn i know she was tall i mean she's 2.06 meters I saw, I saw the some of the photos she's towering over those russian guards eh? yeah, exactly grief 2.06 meters that's tall. six foot nine and she would basically have to crouch at the sewing machine yeah Yo. crazy yeah um yeah so hopefully that gave people a little bit more of an insight yeah into this there um there is a lot more online we want to search stuff um we'll probably uh, put, put a few links of the articles as well so you yeah, yeah that'll be a good idea i'll yeah. try and remember to do that yeah. um yeah. yeah i honestly don't have really any more sort of thoughts or anything we're just a couple of minutes away from from our time so um yeah. any thoughts from your side and uh, no actually um i'm just um you know I'm trying to c come to terms as in you know as to yeah i know she's very very tall i'll post a photo no no in fact i won't post a photo on it it's just people c can look for her yeah i know i know i know i do have the photo of her as well w with the guards and mm, she's yeah they look like uh, like, like i'm tall. like i'm um you know oompa loompas <laughs> kind of thing next to her not really they do <laughs> i didn't even think about that little umpa lump is walking next to her um yeah no right she's um okay so paul so the american guy is called paul whelan right and he's been there for more than three years okay um okay um let me just end in with a quotation from um okay from the whole this i'm um, whole prison i mean i'm um, prisoner swap and so forth mm. okay so uh, pre 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 president biden biden said last week now this this is a very 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 recent article so we're looking at from when this podcast comes out it's probably about a week maybe 10 days back um President Biden said that he was hopeful that the Russian government would be more willing to negotiate the release of Grana and Willen with the midterm elections over. But State Department spokesman Ned Price later said Russia has yet to have any meaningful discussions on the subjects. Well, the fact is, and what the president was alluding to, is the fact that the Russians up until now have not engaged with the seriousness of purpose in the constructive approach that we would have liked to have seen. We put forward this substantial proposal as Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced a number of months ago for the release of Paul William and Brittany Griner. The fact that Paul William and Brittany Griner remain behind bars, Brittany for some 10 months now, uh, yeah, um, that's what it says, uh, Paul William for more than three years now, is a testament to the fact that this process has not moved as quickly as we, we would have liked. You heard us say that from our end. 
This process has not been static. We put forward this substantial proposal. We've had discussions with the Russians. The, the discussions are continuing. We are continuing to look for ways that we can secure as quickly as possible the release of Paul Whelan and Brittany Griner so that they can return to their loved ones here in the United States. Sure. Okay. And Washington has maintained that Griner has been wrongfully detained. Right. That's so interesting. Okay. Is that where I leave it? That's I very think interesting. So, I think so. Yeah. Sorry, this is um <laughs> sorry, I was just um yeah, and then and then um uh yeah, and then her spouse has said that she believes that her arrest was political. Yeah. But so possibility there. Yeah. So, so let us see what comes what what comes out of this and if they actually do release that Russian guy who's um Yeah. It's like, how far do you go? Yeah. I think that's also a question as well. Like, how far do you go to release this Barabbas kind of person? Yeah. You know? Like, like. Hmm. Anyways, I feel that it is probably a little bit political. Yes, the Russian laws. Okay, but then flip side, Russian laws on drugs are very, yeah. very, very stringent. Very strict, yeah. So, was she just? Is it just because? She's like anybody else, any country. Yeah. She she brought in drugs. Mm. She will go to jail for nine years because she was on drugs, not because she's from America. Yeah. That's another side that I, I I I we won't know because we're not Russia. No, we're not. And Ru Russia are in the news for other stuff that are just horrible. Not the people, because it's not their fault. No. That the country and government are what they're doing but anyways yeah as you say um we'll keep you know we'll keep an eye on it and see where this goes yeah well this has been the spaghetti junction podcast it has bruce my name is bruce your name my is name is gareth Ooh. and we have 59 <laughs> subscribers so we have an extra two cool so thank you for joining the family yeah. you won't be sorry that you did <laughs> so like comment subscribe share do all that good stuff yep and we'll catch you in the next one Bye Goodbye. Guys. See ya.